a big thing in melody instruments I think about is EQ, compression, and space. Uh, panning, making sure that everything has its own space in the mix, using effects like reverbs and delays to help give them their space. So I'm a huge fan of effects. I'm really into phasers, delays, you know, reverbs, all that good stuff. So you'll see a lot of those effects in here and I'll show you how I use them. Hey, what's up? I'm Billy Martin, and thanks for watching another one of my beat tutorials. If you don't already, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you turn on notifications and like and comment. Uh, I want to know what you guys are thinking about these videos and, and if I'm covering the topics that you want me to cover. If not, let me know what you want to hear, what other kind of um, things in, in uh, production or beat making you want me to go into. Uh, I'd love to hear, hear what you guys want uh, so I can be making the right videos. Um, and today we're going to focus on melody. Uh, in the last video we did drums, in this video we're going to do melody. We're going to talk about EQing, compression, sound, sound design, sound space, um, effects. I think a big part of melody is how the sounds work together. You know, you, how you've EQ'd them, how you've separated them in the mix, how you've affected them. All those kind of things really help to make sure that each one of your sounds has its own special place in the mix so that you know, it cuts through. So that's something we're really going to focus on today. Hopefully that's something that will help you guys. And uh, let's get into this, this song and we'll figure it out, okay? Okay, so in the last video, um, we went through drums, we went through the, the mixing process of drums, uh, what, what I do as far as compression, EQ, saturation, and how I think about drums. This time we're going to work on some of the mel melody elements and how I mix those. A big thing in melody instruments I think about is EQ, compression, and space. Uh, panning, making sure that everything has its own space in the mix, using effects like reverbs and delays to help give them their space. So I'm a huge fan of effects. I'm really into phasers, delays, you know, reverbs, all that good stuff. So you'll see a lot of those effects in here and I'll show you how I use them. So let's go ahead and I'm, I'm, I'm using the same track I did for my last two videos just to, to show you how it all works together. We'll go ahead and listen to the beat and then I'll break everything down for you. most main sound you're hearing and this is the acoustic guitar so we'll solo out the guitar and we'll go through that first so i will take the effects off and play it for you dry and then i will show you what i did all right so that's the guitar part i recorded this part with an acoustic guitar into a ksm32 microphone and that's the raw sound i got so let's go ahead and bring some eq up So you can see I took a decent amount of low end out. You get a lot of low end when you're doing acoustic just because of the, the natural reverberation from, uh, from the hole in the microphone. There's a little bit of a low mid boost, let's see right here around 500 hertz. I think that's a good spot to give you that, that sort of low warmth um, from a lot of your, your guitars and bass sounds. I cut out a little bit around, let's see, 1200 hertz, somewhere around 1.2, 1.5 hertz. A lot of times you'll get like a, a really shrill, high-pitched sound, whether it's from the, the scrape of your fingers against the strings or, or the, the percussiveness of the acoustic. So I put a little bit out there and then did a tiny bump at uh, 2.8, just to kind of bring in some more of that clarity. And I, uh, I rolled off a little bit of the high stuff up in the 10K, just some of the like room sounds and atmospheric sounds that would get picked up in that area. I just wanted to take them out and then you hear some compression on it. This one I compressed a little heavier than normal. I'm at about 2 or 3 dB of gain reduction. Just because it's an acoustic guitar and an electric guitar, you're a little bit more controlled in the situation because you're dealing with an amp with an acoustic. There, there's a lot of things, your, your finger sound against the fretboard, bumping against the wood, the pick sound, there's a lot of sounds that, that kind of get picked up with acoustic. So. Um, I compressed that a little more just to kind of make sure all my sound was really even. Then after that, um, I used a little RC20. It's a really cool um, retro plugin. I like this 
because the the guitar sounded too sort of folky or maybe like indie rock or something and I, and I wanted something that sounded a little more in the vein of hip hop. Hip hop is big on sampling. Sampling has always been a huge part of of hip hop. So by using this um, RC20, you can kind of give your your guitars like a vintage sampled kind of sound, and, and that's what I used on this one. So I'll go ahead and play it with, and then I'll put it on for you. This is without. You can see the magnitudes at about 60%. If I turned it all the way up, it would sound like this. Which is cool. It sounds like, you know, kind of an old broken radio or something, but it was a little, little too much in the effect, so I pulled it back. And you get a nice mix of, of your guitar sound um, with that sort of retro sound mixed together. So that's, that's my guitar sound. Very often in guitar, you, you double it, you record the part twice, and you pan hard left and hard right, which is really common in rock music. Uh, sometimes I'm he I hear it in hip hop. A lot of times I feel like the guitar is just a single track, uh, and it's very centered, just one guitar down the middle, maybe panned a little bit to one side. So this guitar, I panned um, 20 to the right, and um, you'll see why in a minute. I have a second guitar track here at the beginning of, of the song. I took the same chords and I strummed them just to sort of give a little variation in the intro to the song. And you'll see it's a very, uh, very similar EQ curve. I took a little bit more low end and a lot more high end out. I wanted this to feel really thin and even more like a sample than the other sound. So um, heavily compressed and uh, that's my EQ. Same RC20 preset. I wanted it to feel, you know, like the same as the other guitar. In fact, I have this at 80%, so I didn't, I didn't mix as much as the original sound on as I did the other sound. And then these two, I split 20 right and 20 left, so these guitar sounds are panned. It's the same, same chords, just one's being plucked and one's being strummed. So here, what they sound like together. Those are my two guitars together. Um, after that, I would bring in, let's go ahead and bring in this synth bass sound. So I rotate between a synth bass and an 808 in this track. You, you never hear them both at the same time. That would just be too much low end. Um, so here in the intro, I have the synth bass sound come in just for two bars, and then it drops back out when the drums come in. So we'll go ahead and play that. So on this track, we'll solo out the bass. I'll take all the plugins off. All right, so with nothing on it, you get this. I'm gonna open up Omnisphere, Omnisphere for you guys so you can see which patch it was that I used. Okay, this is called Hard Bobble Bass. I think there was a little bit of an LFO that was making um, uh, the filter that was making this bass wobble a little bit. So I think I, I brought that down just so I'd get a, um, a more straight sound. So what I liked about this was that the bass was wide. There was a lot of like sort of distortion and a little crackly sounds to it. Um, so I knew that would work well for the sound I was looking at, but I wanted sort of that um, low pass, you know, that like Drake and, and 40 use a lot in that OVO sound, it's always that that low pass bass. So um, first thing I did was EQ and I took a good bit of the highs out and boosted some of the lows. After that, I brought in this Puig Tech. Um, I, I, uh, I like to use the, um, the sub bass setting on this one, it's a preset and it really pushes down. You can either pick 20 or 30, depending on what frequency you want to work on, and you, you can listen to it really pull some nice low end out. I'll turn it on and off. Off. On. Okay, after that, some decapitator. 
I used the preset on this one called Dark Fat. It's really nice for that kind of filtered out bass sound. Another plugin I really like is this one from Waves. It's the Max Bass. Um, this is sort of where you're focusing on the saturation. If you listen to a track like this on small, um, like your iPhone or something like that, or small speakers, you're not going to hear the low sub bass. So by bringing in a plugin like Max Bass, you can actually find the overtones in the bass in anywhere from 32 up to 256 hertz. I usually like to set it around 200, and I kind of work in the, the you can see the, the Max Bass sound compared to uh, the original sound, and it just kind of helps bring in the overtones of that sort of low mid-range that would help you hear on different speakers. So I'll go ahead and play it with and without. Without, and bring it on. It's a lot more warmer. And then the last effect, um, a little bit of reverb just so this bass sound kind of you know, sits back a little. I love this uh, this round by Native Instruments. It's, it's a really great reverb. Just a subtle little reverb. And that's that sound. So we can go ahead and hear that with the guitars. The next sound I'm going to bring in after this is my lead. So I have a synth lead up here. I'll listen to that in here. I'll go ahead and solo this one out. We'll take the plugins off and we'll break down the synth lead. So I started out with a patch in uh, Massive X called Balloon Time. So it sounds like this. So I wanted something that had a nice glide to it. Ooh, so that's more plugins on side. Right, so the first thing I did here was that RC20. I explained this in the last video when, when I was breaking this down that I wanted this part to feel like a loop or like a sample. So I used the same preset that I used um, on my guitars on the synth sound, just to kind of glue them together and make them feel like it was one, one loop sound. So you can hear that now on and off without it and with it. Already sounds pretty cool. After that, put a little distortion on it. Dirt. But you can hear as soon as I put the distortion on that a lot of like the low mid low mid like muddy kind of sounds get brought out right away and because this is a lead we don't really need all that so after that I EQ'd out a lot of the lows I turn it off and then back on I have a subtle EQ but you can hear a lot of that muddiness is gone um, the distortion also brings a lot up in the, the higher frequencies, and I didn't need all that too, so I put an auto filter on here to cut out some of those and kind of push the sound back a little bit. I'll turn that on and off. And back on. And then I put some delay on it. So my settings with the waves edge delay. And then the last thing I did was put on an auto pan just to kind of bring the loop back and forth between the, the speakers, or the, the lead back and forth between the speakers. If you've got headphones on, you'll really be able to hear this effect. So that's it for the lead. Um, and like I said before, I'm always thinking about space and how things can fit in, the, in this mix. So, so far I've got both guitars slightly panned off the center. I've got the synth bass right in the center. And then I've got my lead sort of um, EQ'd out to be in the higher range, sort of just bouncing back and forth. So we have like nothing just sitting in the same spot at this point, which I feel is really important when you're working with your melody elements. Uh, the last thing I have in here is some pads. 
sometimes I feel like if, if a, a, a beat feels too empty or too simple, you need some textures. You need some kind of ambient sounds or something else to help fill the space just subtly. It's not a main sound. It's not a big part that overpowers the, the beat. It just brings in something extra. So I'll go ahead and play these pads. I'll take everything off and we'll start with these pads. bring up the Omnisphere patch. So this was some pads called Distant Memories. I feel like I use this one often. It's really nice. So I'm just playing the three the same three chords that are played on the guitar, just on the keys. First thing I did was take out some of the low end. After that, I used a stereo imager. It's just to really kind of just, you know, push push the sound wide. I knew that I wanted the pads to be very um, breathy, kind of in the more higher range, pushed in the back, very ambient and spread wide. So, so you know, remember we had the guitar only spread about 20 both ways. This one is spread a lot farther, so it's going to be wider than the guitars. Again, some reverb. My favorite reverb plug in here. And then here, there's the auto filter. I have it automated at some point throughout the song to, to sort of automate and cut out all the high end from the sound. So that's not a sound we're hearing right now. That would come into play later in the song. And then I'll go ahead and I'll bring everything else back in. really hear here that, that nothing is fighting each other. All the sounds are spread. Every sound has its own space, its own purpose. I think a big thing to think about when you're working on melodies and sound selection is that you don't want to fill up too many sounds just for the sake of sounds. Um, the ear can only hear like three different sounds at a time or, or something like that. Um, so, you know, you've got your vocals, you've got your drums, and you've got your melodies like the you don't want to have too much stuff in there. So, so really I have my main chords filling, filling their purpose. Um, and everything else is just following those chords. I've got the lead in the chords. Everything else is playing the same notes, just different sounds. So if you want to use lots of sounds, build up the same melodies, build up the same chords with different sounds so that you're getting variation, you're getting different chords, but, or different sounds. You just don't want to have too many different sounds or melodies fighting against each other. So that's the basis of my melody. I guess we could go ahead and uh, bring the 808 in. 808 kind of falls in between drums and melodies since it's it's used like a drum, but I think of an 808 more like a bass. So make sure you tune your 808s. I know a lot of people just throw an 808 in and they think it sounds cool, but throw throw a tuner on there. Um, I almost always, you know, I load up my 808 and I put a tuner on it right away just to make sure that it's in tune and it's playing the notes I think it is because not every um, sample 808 that you pull offline is going to be tuned to C. It could be tuned to whatever note sounds good and then that throws you off. So. Think of your 808 like a bass. Make sure that it's 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 hitting with your kick or or um, or not, but make sure it's hitting the right note. So here's the 808. I'll go ahead and solo this one out. And we'll go through that. I'll take everything off this. This is a real short 808 without much tail. I feel like that's a really common sound in hip hop these days. Is is a shorter 808. So um. I like to bump a lot of low end. You can see a really big bump down here in the low end, a little bit of cut around 300. Compression, somewhere between probably four to one and six to one is what I like to do. I like to really compress my 808s because you want them slamming. That's a really important part. Just a little bit of an exciter on here, just a little bit of saturation. Again, I use this Poig Tech with the sub bass preset. Decapitator, you hear how much nice saturation you get right away. I'll turn this on and off without it. Now on. And again, I use that same Max Bass plugin that we talked about before. Just to make sure that you hear this sub on, um, on small speakers. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put the whole thing together. So that, 
takes you through um, pretty much all the melodic elements in the song. Hopefully that helps helps you think about mixing and, and spatial awareness and, and where you want to put your stuff in the mix. Um, we'll go through another one another day because, you know, every song's different. This is just my preference. There's no right or wrongs when it comes to mixing. It's really about your ear. Use your ear and, and do what sounds good. But, you know, there's a couple rules with panning guitars and keeping your subs um, mono and stuff like that that are important to remember because it really does just help with your mix. Hopefully you guys uh, learned something from this. If you have any questions, if you want me to break down anything specific that I went through here, let me know in the comments what you want to hear and uh, I'll work on this for next time. So thanks again for watching you guys and we'll see you for the next tutorial.